Hello everybody, Andrea Tarowski here with Dental Tutoring. So I have been a tutor for about 13 years now. So I tutor dental hygiene and dental assisting students all over the world. And I literally have had students all over the world. I love it. I tutor full time. Um, I temp in an office maybe once or twice a week at the most because I do still love it. And I've been a dental professional for about 13 years. So it's not something that I could entirely stop because I do love it. But for the most part, I tutor full time. So if you ever have any questions, just let me know. But today is going to be exciting because we will be going through some mock exam type questions. And I know even for myself, as a student, if I was studying for a test exam or the board exam, I loved to go through mock exam type questions to see what I actually knew. And then I found that if I didn't know some of the questions, then I knew to go back in my textbook to study that topic so that I would know them for next time. And the nice thing about the course that I teach, um, the Full Board Exam Prep Academy, is that I have mock exam questions on every single topic. There's modules inside for every single topic. There's lectures, there's all kinds of things because I know as a student, the last thing that you wanna do over and over and over again is to have to look in your textbook. So my modules make things a lot easier to understand. So if you guys have any questions about that, please let me know. And please excuse the mess, we are moving in a couple weeks, that's why things are everywhere. And I teach a lot online, so I tend to keep moving things and then putting things back when I have to pack, moving things back, so it's just easier to keep it there. So sorry for the mess. But I'm going to share my screen here so that we can go through some mock exam questions. Um, this PowerPoint is about 47 slides long, so we won't go through the whole thing because I like to keep the video short and sweet. But if you would like to learn more, please just let me know because all of this and more is inside the Board Exam Prep Academy because I do teach um, dental hygiene students and dental assisting students. So if you want to study for the board exam, it's the perfect course for you because you will pass. I have a 99.4 success rate helping students pass. So I know what I'm doing and I love it. Now, this is actually one of the first units, okay? So can everybody see my screen here? It should say questions by dental health tutoring. So these are kind of Think of your first unit, so your first semester where you learn about the dental profession as a whole. So we are going to talk about that because I find this topic is something that a lot of students kind of skip by and don't study it. And then on the exam, they have questions. So let's go through these a little bit here. And let me just move my picture or my image, I guess. So question number one, what is personal supervision? And if you've been watching any of my um, YouTube videos before, I do talk about covering up the answers. So after you read the question, cover up the answers and see if you remember what personal supervision is. Because if you just look at all the questions, and, or I'm um, sorry, all the answers, if you're not really sure what the answer is, then you might be looking at them and kind of thinking, oh wow, well they all kind of sound the same and then that makes it harder for you to answer. So try to cover up the answer first if you can. So A, so the hygienist treats the patient. B, the dentist treats the patient. C, the hygienist does not treat the patient. And D, the dentist does not treat the patient. I find this question kind of easy because e even if you've been studying a little bit, you probably have some idea what the answer is. And you, there are two answers here that stick out to me like a sore thumb where they couldn't be correct. So let me talk about the answers. If you guys um, still need time to think about it, then stop the video and then you can see my answer afterwards. So B is the right answer. So any time, not any time, but typic um, typically on the exam, if you see a question about the dental profession, it's not asking you about the dental hygienist, it's not asking you about the dental assistant, it's not asking you about the receptionist usually they'll be asking about the dentist. So to have a question here where it's talking about the hygienist treating the patient likely wouldn't be the case because it would either be everybody in the office or it would be specifically the dentist. But since we're talking about personal supervision, that is directly talking about the dentist and how he or she treats the patient. Now the assistant can help assist the dentist can help us, or I'm sorry, the hygienist can help assist, but the dentist is personally, like inside the mouth, treating the patient. So that's personal supervision. Let's go through another one here. So what is an internal evaluation? And you probably haven't studied this, have you? Because this is something you would learn in first semester. 
something you probably forgot about and something that you wouldn't think would be on the exam, but it can be. So what is internal evaluation? Is it A, looking at activities of a program after they take place? looking at activities of a program as they take place. So pick apart the keywords here, everybody, if you're not sure. Let me highlight them for you. Um, C, looking at activities of a program before they take place. Um, um, D, looking directly at the activities of the program. Now this is more of a community-based question um, where this would be in your community unit your community textbook, because this is something that they look at in community. So as I tell my students often, say you are going through this mock exam question and you just honestly have no idea, then you should stop and study this unit. Now, even if you're looking at internal evaluation, you might be thinking, oh my God, I have no idea even what unit that's from. So think about everything you study and, you know, you should be able to pick apart that internal evaluation is from your community unit. Now, the nice thing about um, the Board Exam Prep Academy as well is that I can help you with this. So as we have our live sessions, typically twice a month, we will be going through these questions and you could be that student who's, who says like, wow, which unit is this from? Like what PowerPoint should I be looking at to study? for this and then I can let you know. So I don't have to say, well, look in your textbook because nobody wants to look in their textbook anymore, right? So the nice thing inside the course is that I have all of the modules there for you. So as you are going through the mock exams, if you need help, if you have trouble, I can help you, but I can also show you which modules, which PowerPoint, which pages I want you to look at. So it makes studying a lot easier and it makes studying a lot less stressful too. So let's, let's um, talk about the answer here. So the answer is B. So looking at activities of a program as they take place. This is also called the formative evaluation. So you do have to know that the formative evaluation means the same thing as the internal evaluation. Um, so summative evaluation is a completely other type that looks at things after the activity is taking place. Um, and I kind of, let me just put an S on that. So things are different. You see how some of them is looking at activities as they take place or after. So there is a difference. So this is your, your basic, you know, tricky though, um, community type of question. So let's move on here. So this is a very easy one, but honestly, you guys, I put this in here because students don't know it. Um, if you're a dental hygienist, you have to know this. As a dental assistant, of course, you have to know this, but if you're not practicing in Ontario, you don't have to know this. So I do teach students from all over. Um, if you're taking the American exam, so anything other than the Ontario um, Canadian one, you don't have to know this, okay? So this may not be for you, but I put this in here for my students who are in Ontario. So the answer is the Canadian Dental Hygienist Association. And I put this in here because a lot of students just simply didn't know it. So in case you're wondering, but I'll skip through this though because this really doesn't apply to everybody. Um, same thing with this one. So I'm going to skip through that. Same thing with that one. Okay, this one here. So this we're talking about ethics. What is beneficence? And I might be saying that wrong, I don't know. <laughs> What is this? Is it A, telling the truth, B, confidentiality, C, preventing harm, or D, taking accountability? And see how, if you haven't studied this, you would have a hard time answering the questions because if you haven't studied this yet, you have nothing to kind of go on. So if you see, an an or, um, if you see a question where you just have no idea, it is okay to stop and look through that unit, study it, and then come back to the mock exam. So you know that you're not missing anything. And so you will also feel good about yourself too, knowing that you found the answer, if that makes sense. So never be afraid to go back to a unit, study it, and then go back to the mock exams after that. So what do you guys think this one is? It is preventing harm. And, and that's the simple way, that is the best answer, that's the only answer. So beneficence means preventing harm. So this would be something as simple as you put the lead apron on the patient because you don't want to harm the patient. 
Um, you clean the teeth without causing tissue trauma because you don't want to harm the patient. Um, you talk to the patient about perio because you don't want them to not know about it because that can harm them in the long run. You see a patient every three months because you want them to be as healthy as possible. You don't want to harm the patient. So does that make sense sort of where that comes from? Because it's good to know some examples too. Okay, we'll go through a few more. So when must the RDH, the registered dental hygienist, show professionalism? Is it A, when needed? Is it B, following the code of ethics? Is it C, at all times? Or D, in the office? And a lot of students get this wrong, so that's why I like to talk about it. So what do you guys think? When must pretty much any dental professional show professionalism? Because that's what we do. We have to be professional, right? So let's talk about the answer. So at all times, to me, this is, a, this is a very simple answer, but a lot of students get this wrong, so that's why I like to talk about it. And that's why I like to have a live session twice a month too. So then that way, if you have questions, we can talk about it. And I like to talk about certain questions to make sure that you're not only looking at the answers and knowing the answers, but you understand them. So this is one that I do talk about often, you know, so because a lot of students always seem, seem to get this wrong. So if you got this answer wrong, let me know and I can help you. So let's go through one more question here. So this is another ethics type of question. So what is uh, veracity? Is it A, acting professional? Is it B, taking accountability? Is it C, giving the client the right to refuse x-rays? Or is it D, telling the truth? And remember, you guys have to know all of these. So even if you're looking through the answers and then you're thinking acting professional, what would be another name for that? Or B, taking accountability. What's another name for taking accountability? You know, like what could that be? If you don't know, then it means you have to look through your ethics unit again. So always be thinking about things like that. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the answer. If you're not sure yet, then feel free to stop the video and come back. So telling the truth is the answer. So um, veracity means telling the truth. So that's, that means, um, how can I explain telling the truth? So not lying, I don't know. So if a patient asks you, um, how many times a day should I be brushing? And you say you have to do it 10 times a day. That's kind of lying. I mean, that's not a very good example. Um, let's say a patient says to you, well, do I have to have the root canal or can I have the tooth pulled? If you tell them you have to have the root canal, that's lying. And that's not telling the truth because they always have that option of having the root canal, pulling out the tooth or doing nothing. So I guess that would be a good example of lying. Um, does that make sense? If not, just let me know. So, okay guys, so those were some basic questions. Let me just stop sharing my screen here. So those were some basic questions, kind of the unit one of your dental professional class. You know, your, your dental professionalism, you probably learn these things like the first semester, but often students forget to restudy um, re them and then they're on the test, the exam, and then they kind of go, oh shoot, I forgot to study that. So I like to make things easy to study, easy to understand. So if you guys have questions or need something, please let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video.